A reading from the letter to St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, Christ will be magnified in my body, whether by life or by death. For to me, life is Christ and death is gain. If I go on living in the flesh, that means fruitful labor for me. And I do not, do not know which I should choose. I am caught between the two. I want to depart this life and be with Christ, for that is far better. Yet that I remain in the flesh is more necessary for your benefit. Only conduct yourselves in a way worthy of the gospel. So we 
we used to, uh, friends of mine who used to go out there and we used to have contests about who could pick the most. So we had these swings that we had on us and we filled them up. But I remember one of them, he filled it so full, way more than he did, he fell off the ladder. So all the down became drops and they didn't cut it anymore. But we got paid by the grade. And when it came late, late in the day, we probably would work until it was dark and then we used to have to go home and do things like homework and try to get to school. But they would pay us for how many crates we picked. And usually I remember looking, reading the stops for it between my and that because the, the finger owner at the time wasn't quite as generous as this. We got paid for what was there, but he'd throw a little more money toward us. It kind of goes along with this terrible. It goes along with I think it's prophecy today about maybe, yes, it's about generosity, but it's also about, about being industrious in our life and in our faith. I think a racial community that we hear today that has been through a great deal. And they have gambled with the most pain that they lost. And we know, we've heard the last few weeks that during the Babylonian exile, and they turned them back to their faith and thought that life was going to be pretty good for them. And then, as you know, they were exile. They had no place to turn. But because of Yahweh's great love for them, for the chosen people, he takes really good care of them. He watches over them. He tells them today in the gospel, we see from Isaiah, to seek the Lord that he may be found. He brings the ground. Go to see what the Lord is going to be in your life. And he's led them back at this point in Isaiah's prophecy. He's led them back to the temple of Jerusalem. Now, as had coming from exile and back to the promised land, they really have to be and they have to work for the good of all people. They have to work hard. And that they do that, and the reward is going to be great. Them to follow the rules, do their best, they will be cared for, work hard, to have a clean slate. Even though it was late, we find that. They mostly, mostly reformed their ways along. And we know that the Lord took really good care of them in the promised land. Matthew today in that offering, just a few moments ago, the parable of the generous landowner. So it was that no matter how where they came to, when they came to the end of what they did, they, 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 they would be well cared for. Yes, it is a story, as I said before, a story of generosity. But maybe actually it's a story of being industrious. I'm really working hard, looking at what is important in our own life, looking at our faith. You can be the last person hired, and maybe you work harder than anybody else the entire day. Maybe you, you produce more than anyone else. We don't know that in the story. That's one thing we can really look into and think about. It makes a difference when you hear the call of the gospel and how you will really respond to that. Maybe you may you know, turn in your life and turn away from the Lord pretty much as the Israelites did, they went into exile. The Lord is always going to be there. Always welcomes us back. And as the Gospel told us before, we read about two weeks ago, that He would fill, he would fill us 70 and 70 times more in forgiveness, that He would take care of us. That's what we're most in need. But what is important is that we do respond to the Gospel, not when, that we do. We put our entire selves into it. So going back to those kids who were shooting up the trees and picking apples so many, many years ago, it didn't matter how you shared how many apples you picked. It didn't matter that you did it. It
Gabriel, who are the Father's holiness and his holy gifts, we pray. The Savior is through the Father, who has been born. And we come for us, the body of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. The time he was betrayed and entered into his passion, he took bread and gave him thanks, he broke it. He gave his disciples the same, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, given up for you. the way of suffering and enemy to the chalice. Once more giving thanks, gave his disciples the same, take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the eternal covenant, poured out for you and for many for the goodness of sin. Do this in memory of me.
be normalized with God, be able to give things to witness sinful the world. Bless those who all the salt of the land. Lord, I
Let us pray. Gracious and great comfort, O Lord, fill your communion with this Sabbath. We may come in possession of redemption, both in mystery and in the manner of our own life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with you. God bless you, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Our celebration now. And we go in peace to walk into the circle. Our closing hymn is number 385, Sing of God, number 385.